if you decide to produce your audiobook using intelligence, do not expect it to ever be found on Amazon. Why is that? Amazon is sh is shying away from AI with uh with audio because of the copyright issues that go with it. Who actually owns the copyright? So who is it that's doing the AI uh, audio we... right now? Google. So uh, Google's happy well, to do it, but Amazon's it not. <laughs> Amazon's not. Welcome to the Business Ownership Podcast, brought to you by Awareness Strategies, helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedlock, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I'm here with my most amazing guest, Michael. Michael, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's always fun hanging out with you. Awesome. I'm totally looking forward to it. So give everybody a highlight of who you are and what you do for business. Well, um, more or less, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. Um, we've had a, our last documentary, uh, Hate Can Kill, it won over 50 awards at uh, different film festivals around the world. So it's not like, hey, we paid a bunch of Canadians to get to watch your film. So we went, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work what? that way. Did that work? Would they even do that? I don't know if they'd even do that. But, um, Especially if it's a long weekend. They're like, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen, right? So uh, 50 awards globally, um, a bunch in Asia, Europe. Um, the only thing we did... We didn't get any awards out of Africa or South America. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, right? Um, so that's who we, mostly who we are as a business. We're a production company, mm -hmm. uh, filmmaking production company. Along with that, we do a lot of sound um, productions. And we devised a new service because of a new niche developing for authors in audiobooks. Mm -hmm. So we put together... So picture this, that uh, award-winning filmmakers and um, uh, sound editors for uh, the film industry are now going to put together your audio book. So Very fun. I like that. So was it a natural, like, how did that idea spawn? Well, the, the, the idea actually, uh, I got a stack of signed books, of mm -hmm. different authors sending me books, and... I'm dyslexic, so I had trouble reading a whole entire book in one sitting. Um, and I started thinking about it because whenever I dive into a novel with my wife, we always do it via audiobook. It's like, so why not do that for nonfiction? So all these coaches out there, uh, coaches, consultants that have a process, that have this book out there to 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 help people live better lives why not put it on audio and reach to a new, a new audience that wants it wants their information and is desperate to find that better life themselves very fun so when it comes to kind of doing the audio books are is where is the industry at in that regards like give me some background well in um if you go to uh, depictions.media and you and there's an audio books division um, page on our website um, you'll see some marketing information on there and so that marketing information is saying in the next five years that the audiobook downloads and customers are going to grow um, by more than 200 percent so right. and where's where's why the industry not jump now? in there early, right? Yeah. With, with your book. Nice. I love it. So when 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 it comes to audiobooks, are there kind of what is that industry doing right now? Because I have a whole lot of assumptions, but I'm gonna let you <laughs> fill me in first before I iterate <laughs> well, those assumptions. Okay. One, I I am going to point out something because of there's a lot of copyrights and leak and uh, intellectual property uh, regulations uh, to mm -hmm. the industry that if you decide to produce your audiobook using intelligence, do not expect it to ever be found on Amazon. Why is that? Amazon is sh is shying away from AI with uh, with audio because of 
the copyright issues that go with it. Who actually owns the copyright? So who is it that's doing the AI uh, audio we, right now? Google. <laughs> so uh, Google's happy well, to do it, but Amazon's <laughs> not. <laughs> Amazon's not. Uh, and to be totally honest with you, um, Amazon owns Audible, which is the biggest download for audiobooks. Um, right. We do not, in our process, how our process works is we sit down, we talk to you about what the purpose of the book is, where you want to take your business, what, in what direction with that book, how is it going to assist? And then we decide from there, we start laying out scripts and plans so that we can find the either the right voice coach for you to read your own book or the right actor to read your book. Very fun. So that it's always going to be a live voice. Right. So when, when they read the book, um, are they actually reading the book like word for word so that if you had the book in front of you, you could follow through with the audio and, and it's the same? Yes. No, go cool. Manuscript to script is, is going to... We, we, the reason why we do the scripting process is because, hey, you're a professional speaker. Mm -hmm. um, do you think your voice would last more than an hour and a half? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you definitely need voice coaching on that one. And the fact that it would sound different from paragraph to paragraph, let alone chapter to chapter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, the, even professional speakers can't last mm -hmm. more than an hour and a half. So we have right. to have, have it scripted out so they can be timed so that your voice sounds at its strongest. Right. We got to present the best work, right? Well, absolutely. Well, and a lot of people don't write the way they speak. When I when I write, you can hear my voice in your head. <laughs> you almost don't need an audio book because you know it's me that's reading it. But a lot of a lot of people don't. So it and the wording, how I would say something is going to be slightly different in how I would write it than how I would say it. Like there's a lot of grammar that has to happen when you're writing a book. That doesn't have to happen when you're just having a conversation and talking to somebody in a normal conversation. Yeah. Well, so when good. when the authors go to read that, I'm assuming that if they want to read their own, they're going to have <laughs> an issue for the first little while. What would take a professional speaker, what, 40 hours, 70 hours to read could take the author themselves, you know, what, twice that? Right. And you'd be surprised a lot of times that authors come into come into the process thinking, oh, I can just do this myself. And then they hear uh, the, the actor do it. They they get a sampling of, of a couple of actors and they're like, oh. Oh. Then, <laughs> Slightly <laughs> different. Like, and it's not like we have um we we have a, a excellent voice coach that, yeah. that the works with authors to decide to do it themselves and then they nice. realize that it takes hours of coaching for them to get that perfect right. reading voice <laughs> well and it's kind of like the difference between reading to yourself and reading to your kids at night right to read to myself i'm just monotone and do 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 do, do but i can't listen to that in the car i'm gonna <laughs> crash my car you know, yeah, when a, when you read to a little kid, it's got to be a little exciting or entertaining, and they're going to get up and leave and or fall asleep. So depending on your motive for reading to your kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that leads to a good point about our scripting process, because yeah. we want to discuss with you during that process, where should be the inflection points? Because it, it uh, you have the earlier do this, Mary little, had a little lamb thing, so it stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> we we can have Mary had a little lamb, mm -hmm. or Mary had a little lamb. You know, Mary. So, yes. I mean, where do you want the the Mary had a little lamb? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, lamb. I could do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> I I I heard that uh that Mary enjoyed the little lamb. She thought it was really tasty. <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to use that in kids' stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary, wow. Mary was a husky, 
in that case. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all of a sudden we take a dark swing. So when it comes to their books, when uh, the average book I'm assuming is what about 300 pages now? About 200. 200, 200 something. Yeah. And how, about how but long is that as an audio book? Um, it works out to be actually it still works out to be a couple hours of. of of, of listening now okay. uh, with that being said some coaches have decided rather than doing a straight out audiobook and mm -hmm. in this case it does work out really well for them to use their own voice because they turned it into a workbook they took the right. regular book and we broke it up and re-scripted it so that it became a workbook so the person is reading along with the, with their book the text and then it becomes a whole, a whole, whole new program that we have to, that we help them put together. Nice. And again, we can do that because, hey, we're a production company. Exactly. <laughs> well, and I assume too, if you have multiple characters in your story, that it makes more sense to have multiple characters reading than it does to try and get a voice actor that can do like the, like the woman that does Bart Simpson can do eight or 10 different characters, but for the average person to be able to do two characters is pretty uh, stretching it. Yeah, it, it is kind of stretching. There's only, um, if you remember correctly, there's only one, one Mel Blanc, <laughs> you know, and, and for those of you who um, aren't the same generation as Michelle and I, <laughs> Mel Blanc, if you go through cartoons, he did all of the Looney Tunes, he did um, Fred, uh, Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble. Um, and they actually had to hire supporting actors to him in some of the in some of the, the cartoons and actually to again leading back to your point. There's only so many voices we can have. And right. that, that <laughs> over 200 voices. <laughs> he wow. still needs help. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. I, I mean, hands down to those who can do it because to be able to, I can do an accent, but to do a character is totally different. Like it's yeah. when you have five different characters and they all have kind of North American accents, it's, <laughs> it's completely different than being able to go off shoot and go, oh, one was from New York and one was from Louisiana, one was from Carolina. Makes it a little easier to be able to do it. Oh, the, we... Well, hell, we can we can just picture two different countries. It's like <laughs> a the American accent mm -hmm. um, versus the Canadian accent, you know. Well, I'm just saying to be able to have two characters with the same accent makes it extremely difficult to be able to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you? And then how do you when you're actually recording it? And that was the other reason for scripting is because that breaks everything into segments. And makes it easier for us as, when we go to put it back together again. Mm -hmm. These segments go together. These segments go together. Nice. So what are some of the other issues that people have uh, before they come to you? Have they tried to do it on their own and they can't? Have they went like, I don't know, I think this is a great idea to do an audio book, but <laughs> I don't have a clue what I'm doing somewhere in between. How does that look? Well, um, a lot of a lot of them have tried to do something, mm -hmm. and they thought that they they thought that they could do it with AI, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of there, there's a lot of really cool voices um, if you get the right AI, AI programs, right? And then they then they hit the disclaimer um, on Audible and Amazon. Oh, okay. I can't do that. And they want it to appear on on the Audible website for download because it is a pretty good marketing tool. Right. You know, the, the same is with Amazon uh, being able to, to download a Kindle book or something like that. Yeah, Audible is the same in in the marketing end, right? Wow. You're a marketing expert. <laughs> It's like, yeah, hey. I use my own voice for everything, though, because I, I, I can read without sounding like I'm reading, and I can, I can do a lot of things that you know, twenty five years of, <laughs> yeah. of being on on video helps. 
Yeah, you're you're a wonderful talent in and of yourself. Yes, <laughs> yeah. me myself and I get a lot of entertainment out of myself. <laughs> but, but I'm talking about having having a produced work that sits outside of on on somebody else's website. Right. Having a produced work is a good marketing tool in oh, Google. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, the value of having an audible book is insane and uh, a total advocate for it because it's it opens it up to a, a ton of audience that you just wouldn't have otherwise. Like so many people are listening, would rather listen to a, a book than be able to sit down and read it. To take the time, <laughs> ask anybody, when was the last time you actually sat down to read a book? And did you ever, when was the last time you actually finished a book reading it? Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, awesome. Let's roll back. Roll back a second there. Yep. Uh, I'm going to push the rebind button, and yep. you said driving in your car, and uh, well, if it's too monotone, you'd fall asleep. But the fact mm -hmm. is that you like to listen to things while you're driving in your car. Of course. And a lot of like, people do. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But it can't be monotone. No, I, if it's monotone, <laughs> they're going to shut it. Hopefully they shut it off before they get into an accident and get into trouble with it. And I think that's the problem with a lot of people is they think they're enthusiastic, but they don't realize that you have to be overly enthusiastic in order to sound somewhat enthusiastic on a recording. Well, acting is bigger than life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> awesome. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you about a Cinderella story of one of your clients. We're going to be right back. Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap. So I'm super excited to hear an example of a Cinderella story of one of your clients. Okay. So there was an artist nearby and she had this really cute story about a dragon. And the dragon is actually a metaphor for how we can live our lives. And I thought it was a great story. And she was having trouble getting it out there, getting it to the to the right audience. And so we found we found her uh, a an actor. She uh, we went through an audition process of about maybe five different actors, and she picked one. Um, and that actor gave the dragon itself a voice. It gave how the dragon wanted to live its life this voice also. It, so as, as, as we went through that whole process and we got it out there to people, it now has increased her sales. And she, she does wonderful artwork, jewelry, and she tells stories. And her sales have increased and she feels more confident about things. And she's proud to say that she actually has an audio story out there that people can listen to and enjoy and learn something new about their life. I love it. So I know the authors in the audience are going to want more from you. How do they start that journey with you? Well, the first thing they should do is um, go to depictions.media and I'll actually supply you with, with a link and they can, they can also contact me uh, via email at michael at depictions.media.com. Nice. We will, of course, have all of Michael's links in the show notes. So go ahead and scroll down and click on the link, open up in a new browser because we're not done yet. So, Michael, I get to ask you, at what point in life did you know you're especially kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Oh. <laughs> She's I, well, I, I staring at the camera that. going, what? <laughs> well, it, it's kind of, kind of crazy because I grew up in small business. My parents both each owned a small business. And my very first stab at being an entrepreneur was when I was 16 and I would, somebody handed me a carpet cleaning machine 
So I started gathering customers. And I gathered enough customers that I actually got to be the talk um, in a sales meeting in Sears. <laughs> now, how many of us remember Sears, right? But remember, right? they all for all these different services. Yeah. I actually got to be the talk of who is this 16-year-old kid that is taking over a neighborhood away from our services. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Thanks for recognition, by the way. Congratulations. Yeah. And it was all word of mouth stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eventually, Sears did actually overtake me. And of course, Uh I was 16 years old. I had other ambitions rather than doing a carpet cleaning. So, And I'm sure they had a devoted department. (laughs) 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 You're like, yeah, okay, whatever. (laughs) But it but it became something to tap into when um when my chemical engineering uh career ended, mm-hmm. um, so I it, I knew I could sort of, I could do something else I could actually open up my own own shop and and turn um what was this, at the time a hobby of taking pictures and shooting video and stuff like that um the hobby into an actual business and I learned how how to turn it into a production team and into a whole production business that you see now is depictions media. Um, we're actually depictions. Yeah. Depictions media publishing Inc. <laughs> so we've been incorporated. Very fun. Well, and we're glad you pursued your interests. You've been absolutely awesome. Any last words for our peeps? Don't be afraid to go out there and take a stab at it yourself. (laughs) (laughs) If you have that heart desire, just go with it. I love it. Awesome. Thank you, Michael, for your time. I appreciate it immensely. And I know how valuable it is. Thank you. Awesome. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your friends. We love helping entrepreneurs grow. Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap.